Our beloved chemistry teacher, Mr. Paul Myers, is retiring from Armbray Academy. Today, we get a chance to sit down in the science lab with Paul to talk about his career, his thoughts on Armbray, and his plans for the year ahead. So before we get to talking about Armbre, let's talk about your career before Armbre. You know, when, when did you start and what schools did you teach at and who were your influences? So I, I guess my teaching career, I have to go back a little bit before that. I graduated as a chemical engineer and uh, ended up working at the Polymer International in Truro. And it was while I was working there, um, the company was, it was a young company and, and uh, Everybody was just getting started there, and they were sending me on courses all over the place to, to, to develop te techniques and training to, to pass on to the staff. So I, I found out very quickly that engineering was not where I wanted to be, um, and I loved the teaching component right. of, of that. And, uh, and, and the more I did that, the more I realized that uh, I have just, I, I've, got to, I've got to do a career change. And, and so the, the following year, I did my um, BED at, uh, at St. Mary's. And yeah. uh, it, I almost got kicked out of uh, uh, education before I got into it because I wasn't attending classes. I was teaching in, in the public school system. In those days, you could yeah. sub without necessarily, as long as you had the commitment, you were enrolled in, in a BED program, okay. you, you, could, you could sub. So I was spending three or four days a week subbing and not in classes, and they found out about that and, and basically said, Paul, you don't start attending classes, uh, we're going to drop yeah. you from yeah. the program. So, yeah. so I had to do a, a gear shift uh, quite a way. And I was also taking a chemistry course because mm -hmm. most of my chemistry up to that point had been applied chemistry, and I, and I, needed, okay. I needed some just basic chemistry uh, if I was going to teach the subject. So, so anyway, following um, that, I got hired on by the, uh, the city and ended up teaching at... Uh, the former Queen Elizabeth High School, and I was there for 20 years, and those were, those were really the years where I learned to teach the subject. Um, my two master teachers, uh, Earl Sampson at St. Pat's and Joanne McDonald at uh, QEH, mm -hmm. were the two that I had, <clears throat> and they were just fabulous. They were no, not only passionate about chemistry, uh, they also mm -hmm. were, were just had a way of, of delivering mm -hmm. uh, the program, and, and I and I just, just like a sponge, I was just absorbing everything I could I could get from them. Mm -hmm. And I also, when they retired, I, I gleaned a number of their pieces of, of material and so on that they were using, and and, uh, and so I, I taught at QE from '74 to '94, mm -hmm. and uh, then there was an opportunity to go out to uh, J.L. Lilsey there. They virtually wiped out their chemistry department. Two of their master teachers were retiring, mm -hmm. and uh, so and there was a, an op a possibility of, of becoming a science department head out there. So, so I, I grabbed that opportunity, yeah. and um, and of course while I was out there, I, I continued to tap into whatever resources I, I could. I, I also got to know the the science head at um, Halifax West who was also a chemistry teacher, chemistry major, mm -hmm. and actually wrote a book. Um, and and okay. uh, so, uh, and those people, as they retired, I, things that they did well, I tried to, to capture. And mm -hmm. uh, so, so I finished my, my public school career at, uh, at uh, J.L. Ilsey in 2006. And, uh, and I say, so I had 20 years at QEH and another 12 at, uh, at J.L. Ilsey. And then, so you retired from there as a department head? As a department head, okay. yeah, science department head. It's science and technology. At the time, they had, they had um, merged. They used to have the, the technology department and science department as two different departments, and then we, due to all the cutbacks and everything, they, um, they, sure. they merged the two, and it was under one, uh, one head. So, it, uh, so that's a pretty nice, long career. Yes. <clears throat> and, uh, like, you know, so that ends, and then how do you, how do you end up going from that to Armbre? Like, how did, how did that happen? Well, that, that, that's an interesting story, too. Um, I, I really had no intention of continuing. I wasn't going to go on the sub list. I was going to retire to the golf course. I was also <laughs> starting a, a business at that point, uh, an investment business. And uh, so, and I was working with an outfit in Toronto. And, uh, and then I also um, got hired <clears throat> by Mount St. Vincent to, to do the teacher supervision program okay. the first and second year <clears throat> you know teaching teachers and and I was doing night school wow. you know uh, wow. so so I, I had enough to do I it's didn't have to go to Armbre to, I really wasn't anyway I so I caught but but so there was an ad in the in the paper they wanted a chemistry teacher and being curious I just I, there was a phone number there so I phoned and, and I got passed over to John Stone 
Okay. And and I knew John. I knew John from the public system. And he and I were talking. And and Paul, oh, come on out and have a, have a look at it. So so I did. And, and I met Gary O'Mara. And and uh, and so to make a, make a long story short, I. I you know, whether John talked me into it, I, I don't know. But anyway, I, I thought, well, okay, I'll try it for a year, you know, and see what, uh, right. see how it goes. And and, uh, and and they were fabulous. I, I remember as a department head in the city, we had very limited budgets. And, and uh, you know, I, I remember I had to alternate between biology, physics, and chemistry one year at a time. You know, he had so much. And, and I remember going into Gary and very sheepishly and saying, Look, Gary, I, We've, we've got some major upgrading to, to do in this lab. I, I said, uh, I'm going to have to spend some money. His reply to me is, Paul, if we need it, get it. And I, I thought, yeah. holy suffering. So, uh, so yeah. anyway, um, so, so that year, I, I had just a great year. Loved the kids, uh, yeah. small classes, um, compared to the 30 to 40 that I was sure. dealing with in the public school system. So, uh, so yeah, it was just a, just a great year. And, and uh and, and I remember at the end of that year saying to, to my wife that, uh, you know, maybe I'll try it again mm. for another year. And, and, and it went on and on. And, and, and so, again, at, at the end of 14 years, I, I, I was still here at Armbury. So yeah. I just completed my, my 14th year. That's amazing. Uh, so you, you came from a situation where you were teaching in, in schools with large departments, yep. lots of colleagues. You come here, you're the only chemistry teacher. Yep. How did you ha- like? You know, how did you handle that? Like, what did you try to do in, in the years when you were here? Well, th- that wasn't a traumatic experience for me because of the 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 you know thirty two years that I spent in the public system. I, I I I did feel sorry for some of the the specialists that were here in the in the school. You know, the biology teacher and the physics teacher, and 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 fortunately at that time I still had my resources within the right. the city, so I was able to tap into those uh, in a variety of, of different ways. So. So teaching, coming here and being the only chemistry teacher really wasn't uh, a traumatic experience for me. Um, I had to learn the smart board. Um, that, that, was a, that was a unique experience. So I, so I dove into that and, yeah. and uh, um, became quite proficient at, at using that and developing materials uh, for that. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of what I did was just refining and, and, and redeveloping some of the things mm-hmm. I had. I had to modify programs a little bit because Although I had taught some of the honors kids in the public school system, I had a whole class of what I considered right. honor kids. Sure. And, and so I was able to go a lot deeper, uh, cover a lot more things, cover things faster than I normally would uh, when, you're, mm. when you're dealing in the public system. You've got a fairly heterogeneous type of class yes. uh, from the bottom end to the top end. So you've got to pick some sort of a, a, a middle in between. Mm. Here I found that that middle was actually quite high and, and so I was able to adapt and modify uh, uh, materials for that and I was always continually looking for, for, for new ideas and, and so on and I still as I say still had some colleagues in the public school system that uh, that I could tap into and, and in fact actually one of the textbooks we currently use here is being used in the IB program at Citadel and, okay. and, and I got a hold of that because I, I really I really found very few textbooks that I found useful. That one in particular was excellent, and, and it was through that that I was able mm. to uh, that I ordered that uh, that text and, and got that. So, so in terms of being isolated, um, I really didn't feel that, I, and I felt yeah. that my knowledge base was enough that uh, that I, I certainly could survive quite nicely. I, I had to learn new things, but mm-hmm. uh, but mm-hmm. that wasn't uh, that wasn't uh, you know a real problem for me. Um, <clears throat> a lot we have a lot of. Our students that talk about how how much fun your chemistry classes are like they love mr meyer's chemistry classes how do you make chemistry fun like how do you do that well i, I, I don't know it, it I, one of the things i really stress is hands-on um i i absolutely feel that you can't teach chemistry without getting the kids yeah. involved and so i tried as much as possible to have the kids doing something at least once a week, doing a lab once a week. Um, I also tried, whenever possible, to um, show them something. So if I was talking about the mole concept, for example, that means nothing to kids. But if I could hold up a vial of iron filings or a vial of sulfur and say to them, you know, in that vial, there's 6.023 times 10 to the 23 atoms of sulfur. Now the kids can see that, you know, yeah. they, they, they can, so, so, so it was a combination of, uh, I did a massive number of demonstrations and, and they weren't, 
big demonstrations. Some of them were just as simple as, as pulling out a vial. Or I remember doing chemical formulas and saying, uh, oh, by the way, the Latin names, the, the manufacturers still use that. Let's take a look at the bottle of copper sulfate. Right. There's the Latin name, cupric sulfate. You know, and, and, and so I tried to, 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 you know, to put chemistry in a context that, that they could relate to. Um, also, it was, very, it was very important to me to have the kids involved in the development of my, <clears throat> my lesson. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, the very first day of class in grade 11, I would, I would hand them a piece of paper. Um, I would do a little demonstration, and they would write down what they felt was going on, and, and then we'd go through and dissect it in terms of what they had learned in grade 9 and grade 10, and, and here they were involved in mm -hmm. chemistry, and, and, and that, that was one of the main things, is to try and keep them involved. In, in chemistry as much as possible to show them real tangible things that they yeah. could uh, they could relate to and and I also partly because of my engineering background I, I, I tried to relate especially in the grade 12 course uh, as much as I could to the real world you know uh, yeah. you know for years we had a refinery across the the harbor so when we did organic chemistry there you go you got a whole industry across the harbor mm -hmm. that's, that's doing organic chemistry we do um, Electrochemistry, and I talk about their car, you know, the battery in their car. Okay, there's there's where you you're looking at chemistry in action. Right. So through the combination of of um, and, and I often I often surprise the kids too. I would do a demonstration, wouldn't tell them what it was all about, right. and have them, well, what the heck's that all about? So so they were engaged. Uh, yeah. You know, I I can remember when I was doing atomic theory with the grade 11s, I would bring out a this this black box is very very common demonstration that teachers do. Wouldn't tell them anything. Just give them the box. Tell me what's in it. Give them a ruler. They didn't have a clue what was going on. And and then at the end of it, so so what was all this all about? Mm -hmm. You know. And and, and so I, I tried to engage the kids um, through them participating yeah. in the, in the development of the the, the lesson. And well, oh, hopefully it worked. Hopefully yeah. it worked. Yeah. 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 Um, you're also uh, heavily involved. You've been heavily involved in the wider program here mm -hmm. at Arbery, coaching, yes, uh, robotics, the golf team, things like that. Just talk about that for a couple minutes. Just about like what that means to you and and how how you feel about your ability to connect with kids outside the classroom as well. Yeah, I, I, I've always been a, an avid sports person, both competitively and recreationally, and and I really feel that that's part of, of a kid's education mm -hmm. is is the is the beyond the classroom, and uh, so at every school I was involved in in the extracurricular programs. I in fact when I came to Armory, I didn't actually do robotics or golf. I started actually in curling. I was a competitive curler, okay. and uh, and mm. uh, had curled for probably 15 years and when I came here um, you know Sue needed a curling coach so that's how I started I started with the curling program and then when I couldn't when my knees gave out I, <laughs> I, I just became a statue um, I, 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 and in the process I, I got involved in the robotics one of the parents was uh, was asking about robotics and I had right. done robotics we actually started robotics at JL Ilsey Okay. Um, Dr. Peter Gregson, electrical engineer at uh, Tons, actually came to us one day and wanted to know if the school wanted to get involved in, in this thing called robotics. It, it was called Robotics East at that time. And, and uh, so, so in 2009, we started robotics here at the school. And, and what an absolute, I had involved, been involved in science fairs uh, for years and, and was actually the chair of the, of the Helix uh, Regional Science Fair for a number of years. And, and but robotics was just an absolutely fabulous opportunity. They fit right into my mindset. Uh, here was an opportunity for kids to hands-on, um, work as a team, solve a real-world problem. I mean, perfect, perfect uh, uh, educational tool, you know, to, uh, to, to pass on to kids. So, so we started, and, and, and the other thing, teach kids a little bit about uh, how to put a screw into a piece of uh, yeah. metal and how to cut a piece of metal, because and, and, a lot of these kids have never done that in their life before. Yeah. So, um, so that was an opportunity to, um, to get kids involved in, uh, in hands-on, real-world problem solving and uh, work as a team, mm -hmm. you know, to, uh, to, to do that. And then, of course, the, the golf was a natural. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have a passion for golf. Yeah. Can't play it, but I enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. And and um, so uh, so yeah, we started the, started the golf team. And and uh, so, to me, the extracurricular 
activities in a school are, are vital, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just as every bit as vital as the, as the, uh, the, the so-called um, core curriculum uh, sure. part of the school. And, and uh, it, it just rounds out the, uh, the, the individual uh, as a whole. So, yeah. so, so that's kind of how I got yeah, involved yeah. in that aspect yeah. of, uh, of, uh, of our break. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> this come, even though you're retiring, you're going to stay involved with the school a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm maybe just share some of those things that you're going to stay involved in and, and how that's going to work out. So, so one of the things that really struck me when I first came to Arbery is the, is the fact that teachers at Arbery, although they, although they can tap into resources, those resources are, are pretty limited. And, and uh, I, I say, I look back on my own career and I thought how, how wonderful to have a whole variety of different people mm -hmm. uh, taught different ways. Um, I could pick and choose you know the, the the methodologies that I that I thought mm -hmm. would would be suitable to me, and uh, so um, one of the things I, I would I was hoping that which I will I will be passing on to to my predecessor is that um, I, I have forty six years of, mm -hmm. of experience, and and some of the stuff I have is good, um, mm -hmm. even some of the stuff that I did back in the seventies and eighties, I, I even today I can't find good replacements for that stuff. And I, and I don't even know if teachers, new chemistry teachers, are even aware of, of some of the stuff that existed back then. Um, so the game plan was to at least pass on uh, some of that, uh, that, that knowledge and, and serve as a, as a, as a mentor if, if, if needed uh, mm -hmm. to, to the person coming in uh, uh, yeah. replacing me. And, and uh, so in the smart board, I, I, I did. I feel I gained a little bit of expertise in there. Yeah. Was able to do things with that smart board that uh, I couldn't even do in the public school system. I can mm -hmm. remember trying to show uh, a three-dimensional version of how the atom is put together in uh, in in the public school system, and I had to use layers of overheads. Right. Here, I can I can manipulate objects, and I can I can actually show kids how you know the first few layers of an atom would go together. I can show kids what happens when something dissolves. You know, I can move things around uh, mm -hmm. the, the screen, and and uh, and so I can generate things on the smart board that I never could have generated uh, in the public school system. And just to save somebody from reinventing the wheel again, I mean, this it, it, it took me five, six years to to develop some of this stuff. So, so um, if I can pass some of that stuff on to to you know, new, the, the new teacher, that, that, yeah. that would be, I mean, what am I going to do with it? <laughs> yeah. So, so it, yeah. um, so yeah, it, uh, it, uh, it's a it, wonderful legacy to leave, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it, it, as I say, it, it, um, you know, I, I think this is probably one of the things that, that a new teacher in a private school probably doesn't have access to is, mm. is, is resources. Great. Uh, they eventually can get, can get those, but it takes time. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, what does the first year of your official yeah. retirement look like? What's that going to look? Well, like? I'm not sure. I'm I'm totally retired. I I, I certainly uh, <laughs> I, I I do have a business that I run, yes. um, and and, and uh, so I'll certainly continue with that. I'm going to get some golf in in the fall. Yes. Um, I'll do that. I I also actually when I retired from uh, JL, one of the things I did was uh, I built a. Uh, I, I do woodworking, mm -hmm. so I built a workshop and I, I accumulated a variety of tools with the idea that I was going to do things for the for the, the, the kids and so on and the fa their families and never really pursued that <laughs> because somebody by the name of John Stone coursed me into, into teaching here at Armbray. So years, so yeah. I found I found yeah. a lot of my energies were were put into into the into the course. So I I will continue to to, to do that. Um, I still play squash. And uh, once Dalplex opens, I, I, I'm still pretty avid in terms of going to the, the gym you know, a number of times a week, so I will continue to do that. I'll golf probably right through till the end of October. Um, we'll do some traveling. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, so, uh, and I've got eight grandchildren now, and, and I find that yeah. um, I'm spending, you know, teaching them how to play tennis. And I wasn't a golfer, I was a tennis player. And uh, so, um, so, in fact, I find myself doing that this, during the summer and things like that, so, and working with them. And mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so, yeah, I, 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 I have a feeling I'll be, I'll be reasonably busy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you've got a rich, um, robust life ahead of you, it sounds like, uh, so that's great. Um, maybe a final thought or a memory from Armbray that you'd like to share? 
Well, I, I think probably, I, I mean, I've had a very wonderful career, and I, I think to end my career at Armbray, I, I couldn't think of a, a, a better way to, to phase out. Um, I'm still passionate about my subject. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed Armbray. Um, the best move I ever made, I think, was coming here. And, and uh, the kids, wonderful, wonderful kids, wonderful staff, and, and uh, so that to finish a career up, um, the way I did, um, I, I, I would just wish that for everybody. And, and uh, so, yeah, yeah. So, it, uh, yeah. So, so, yeah. That's that's uh, that that's I guess all I can say on that matter. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. <laughs>